Hey everyone, this is Mr. Everything, and I wanted to do an update on my 95 Crown Victoria. Uh, for those that are interested, I, I did a video last year when I got the car, kind of just showing what it is and where I was at with it. I mean, the good news is that, as you would expect from a Panther, it pretty much doesn't need anything. I uh, just put new brakes on the back, that's why I don't have to worry about like going into the back of someone. That was about the worst thing, was the braking wasn't that good. But beyond that, I mean, the car is pretty much untouched. Minus a few little improvements I did to it. But I'm happy with where it's at. I mean, it still looks great. I think it made it look a little better. I did go over it with some polish this year. Now, it still has the scratches in it up close, but I didn't want to get into, like, serious paint correction. It is an outdoor car. But from a distance, I think it still looks really sharp. And then I always use... Uh, Right now, I'm, I'm just going with Griot's ceramic wax. It sprays on, wipe it off, and it holds up for a long time. I mean, it's pretty much in perfect shape. And the funny thing when I make these videos, it's always like really windy out or really hot, and it was really hot, and now it's getting windy, so it's just a tradition of how it goes here, I guess. But I'll go ahead and get in. I kind of feel like Anthony from Specialty Motor Cars with a vehicle like this, just when I'm riding around and I'm really happy with it. And being old school, no keyless entry on this one. Now, I think, it, I don't know if it was an option. I mean, it is an LX, but I'm sure the Lincolns from back then had it. That's kind of one of the only things that's bad is it does have a little, maybe someone keyed it or someone just scraped it when they were getting in and out. But beyond that, I kind of think what really makes this car is just the uh, color matched interior. I mean, it's hard to tell. Like, it's kind of green looking. That's, I think it's more blue looking than green. I usually just refer to it as blue, but it is a little bit green. I think the interior is a little more green than blue. But you can see. I'm still low mileage, just turned 47,000. Uh, really nice. Uh, like I said, I always put a uh, rear view dash cam in. I like them for, I guess, legal purposes if you were in an accident and you knew you were in the right. And it just helps you get so much better uh, uh, rear view angle. I think it's almost 180 degrees. And uh, the only thing that is kind of shitty was my uh, when I added this on, my... Uh, stock mirror fell off and I've added these on several cars now and none of them have ever done that I'll maybe just chalk it up to the fact the car is almost 30 years old but uh, I tried you know the Permatex or whatever I've tried JV Weld I cleaned it up I mean my windows are already clean to begin with but I really cleaned that spot up it would just fall back off like within a day or two so I figured since I'm just using this anyway I really don't need to attach it to that mirror uh, I, I had one of those suction cup uh, rear view mirrors, but there was way too much play. So two of these uh, phone mounts, it's not the cleanest look, and the, uh, the worst part again is on the outside, you got two suction cups you can see. But for now, I'm just gonna do this. I still have the factory mirror. If I would ever wanna maybe have a professional do it, but you know, if I put this back on, is it gonna fall off again? And I put a better radar detector in it. I got, got my unit in that I used to have in my Grand Marquis in here now, hardwired. And I hardwire this, I like to keep everything as minimal as ter in terms of uh, wire management as I can. Uh, I might have mentioned in the original video, this clock doesn't keep good time. I don't know if there's a way to fix it. So I, especially since this radar detector has a uh, clock built into it and it's GPS, so it's accurate. I just put some electrical tape over that. And when you can see here, I, I'm using a MagSafe mount for my phone now. That was the prior mount I used, and I figured I would just add this on here so I have a little bit better articulation if I need it. And the radio is something I really haven't used that much, but and I don't think it sounds very good, but it does work. I don't think there's any crackling in the speakers or anything. Now, uh, my Grand Marquis radio, I, I, well, I know I'd add cassette, and I, I'd add CD, and it would add good radio. I mean, everything, it didn't have an aux jack, though. So I, I should have, before I got rid of that car, I really should have tried to see if that radio would just hook up to here. 
Uh, I'd never really use it, but I have a Impala I got, and it has a Bose system. So I was using it, and I was like, you know, I'd like to play my phone to this, and get no aux port. And also, with the older cars, in the day you would have that cassette adapter of the 3.5 millimeter jack. So I was gonna do that, but I see now they make them in a Bluetooth transmitter. So it's the same principle if you know what I'm talking about, but instead of using the cord, it's just it has a Bluetooth receiver. So it turns out my tape deck doesn't work. It just keeps spitting the tape back out. And instead of trying to figure out you know, if I could take this apart, it's not worth it. I could add another radio, but for now I'm just going with this little uh, Bluetooth receiver. It's an FM transmitter that connects to your phone via Bluetooth. So it's all wireless, it's rechargeable. And this car only, the 12 volt, at least with, I think all of the Panthers is hot all the time. So you have one here. And I think I mentioned in another video, this one doesn't work. And uh, I haven't gotten into that to see if it's wiring. I, I don't think it's a fuse because my other one works. I don't think that's on a separate fuse. So I don't want one that those uh, 12 volt ones, you gotta, you gotta have to unplug it every time. And I could get uh, a hub, but then you'd have to have a master switch. And again, that's the simplest way. So that's what I'm going with here. If the car had an aux port, then there's aux auxiliary and Bluetooth transmitters as well. Uh, that's just the control, the mute switch and light for the uh, unit in when you have their custom hard, hard wire kit. Uh, steering wheel. I always like a nice clean steering wheel, so this one didn't need a cover or anything. It's pretty much perfect. I mean, there's somewhere here, but it's not bad. And the only thing, other thing that doesn't work is the cruise control, which I don't use, but it would be nice if that worked. But uh, interestingly enough, it never worked in my Grand Marquis either. So I don't know if that was a common problem or if it's clock spring, but my horn does work. And everything looking real nice. Got the a lockable fuel door, which you need in today's economy. Come around the back here. Again, everything's looking real good. Uh, everything, I mean, I'm not a big fan of cloth, but the cloth in this, it's really plush. It's not the velour, because a lot of people like, this is the velour. This really soft. This, like I said, I think it's almost like a hound's tooth or something. It's like textured, like kind of like how corduroy is textured, but it's not rough. It's nice and soft. So, I mean, the only thing is like sitting on Velcro. When you get in, you, it's hard to slide, which I guess would be a plus maybe in a car where you're taking some hard corners. But the uh, only other lame thing are these dinky little headrests, I guess, when you, they didn't care about your head. The mine pulled out a little bit. There's no way to really secure, but you can see this is more sturdy. So they're they're pretty much useless, but and then I always keep some towels and uh, in case you know, I get some rain in the car. And I always use Covercraft sunshades. Uh, they work great. They're reliable. They're so easy to get in and out because that is how they accordion fold. Real nice. And as all my cars, if, if I can get to them, I change out the light bulbs to LEDs. They're brighter. It's a little bit more pleasing, I think. It can be a little harsh too, but I think it's still better than like old piss yellow lighting in your car. And again, my rear view camera. But with this car, you have quite a bit of uh, rear visibility out of it. And in the old ones, you do get the uh, little ashtray. No lighter, but you do get the ashtray. And also the chrome buckles. So this car didn't need too much interior-wise to clean up, but I, I did put my yearly bit of shine on it so everything's looking good. And just get a better view here of up front. You got that little minimal amount of wood grain compared to the Grand Marquis where you have that whole... That like whole strip here was all wood grain. Uh, it's not bad. But I really think it's just that color match cloth that kind of makes this interior. 
And the funny thing, I guess someone told me it's just because of the characteristics of the wheelbase, which I guess is why they have the long wheelbase Lincolns. I'm 6'2", so I have my seat up front a little further back just so I can be comfortable up front. But uh, very little leg room in the back for a big boy like me. And coming back to the trunk again, kind of an old school thing. You have two keys. No, that's three. That's the wrong key. The uh, ignition key and the door key, and then a separate key for the trunk. Now, I kind of wish that the key was in here like the older generation before. So they just put, tacked this one kind of in the middle. Doesn't look too good, and that looked way better when they integrated it down there if they're not going to put it in the badge. But again, everything's real clean in here. You know, for some reason, a lot of these look like someone butchered a cow in them, but mine was pretty good. I had a couple of light stains, but just a little bit of resolve and a brush took them out. Keep a little bit of a carpeting just as an extra layer of protection. Deep trunk, I mean, I got a cooler in here, an organizer, room for tools up here, full-size spare in the uh, older ones. I, to me, a lot nicer than the compact, but you don't have as much storage then, because I like to cram a few things up here. Air suspension for this model. Again, my air suspension is still working. I'll touch on a few of the mechanical bugs I had, or seemingly, and uh, yeah, it's working for me. And then you have the fuel pump switch on all of them. And then this is, since this is a lockable fuel door, you have your fuel door release. And I always appreciate when cars put the lining in here. I think it probably costs more, but it's for uh, sound deadening. And I just, I think it looks a lot nicer than just having that all open and I don't know if I mentioned it at the time I did replace my reverse lights with LEDs it, especially when you have a dash cam uh, that's that rear once you get a little bit of light it looks like daylight so that's always a help and one thing I love about the Panthers are the cornering lights so I have LEDs in here really it's almost like a fog light because this car doesn't have fog lights but when you have one of these on to turn, you can see real good out the sides. Um, and then I have C light. Uh, I think it's 9005 and sixes for low and high because they're separate on this car. The newer ones use a 9007 dual filament. And I keep the turn signals and rear uh, brake lights incandescent just so I don't have to run resistors or worry about like lights coming on or anything. There is a little crack here, it's in the grill, it's been in here since I got it, but the chrome stayed real nice. I mean, the front of it's actually still in nice shape. You know, for all the highway driving I do, it's not real bashed up or anything. I think I got a bug or two on it, but it's held up nicely. And then the scuff that was in it when I bought it, but I don't know, it's hardly even worth touching when the paint's this nice. Again, the, uh, the chrome fender flares are still looking good. They haven't rusted yet, but I don't drive the car in the winter. Unfortunately, it sits outside, but I'm, I'm trying not to take it out in the winter time when there's any solid on the road. Wheels, they're super hard to clean. I believe my front brakes are semi-metallic because they just get filthy black to where the back ones pretty much always stay nice and clean. And I haven't really come up with a good way yet because wheel brushes don't fit in all those spokes and a sponge will get some of it, but not all of it. But conversely, you clean it and then can semi-metallics within a week, they're filthy again. So I usually don't get too upset if, if I didn't get them real nice. And the good old white walls, which I don't even think they make the Michelin symmetries anymore. I think the only options are Vogue's and uh, uh, Uniroyal Tiger Paws. I guess I'll go ahead and show the fuel door, but I did add one of these little gas guards. Now, I, I used to think that uh, WeatherTech made one that was thicker, and it had like some grooves and channels that if you did get fuel, it would kind of just direct it right out. I can't find it. I can't find any like Google images or anything, so I don't know if I'm just insane and imagining that they made that product or someone else made it, but you look this up online, this is the only kind you can find. So it does help with this car, there's nowhere to hang the cap. 
So you can either hang that there to protect your paint, or if uh, you know, a little bit drips, it'll either collect here or hopefully not run on the paint. And with a lot of, I don't know if all the Panthers had it, but you got the airbag, air bladder, lumbar, which I don't use, but it's kind of a neat thing and it does still work. And the classic 4.6. I think that engine started in 91. Uh, or maybe 90 or 92 because 92 was the first year because my grandpa had one and that was the new body style and they didn't have a grill so that's why this is such a weird little grill that they just kind of put in there so this started in 92 I just upgraded to an AGM battery uh, I put a Wix uh, air filter in it and the top a little bit of cooling it was just a little bit low when I got it I think everything else is still stock. I mean, the only problem is the suspension. That's the nice thing of the later models when I think they went to rack and pinion was that uh, it was all metal, the control arms and or aluminum, to where these are just, I guess, steel and they're all rusted. So if you need to replace that, you definitely want to soak it in some penetrating oil. But I mean, it looks pretty clean under here. Again, I actually think they either put a heavier coat of paint on it or they did clear this because on my 04 Grand Marquis this was just matte it was barely sprayed in and if you had grease and you tried to wipe it you'd actually start taking the paint off so I think I think the quality just you know I guess with everything I think it was a little bit better back in the day no leaks or anything uh, this one has the plug-in wire with the coil pack compared to the coil on the plug on the later models and interestingly you have I guess it's a water pump driven fan but then you also have electric fans so it is I guess dual fans in this year I don't know why they kept both but uh, maybe there's a reason for it I'm not that much of a mechanic to know but kind of neat and uh, also very deadly for your hands if what I say caution fan but everything under here is pretty good and the less time with the hood up on these the better but with these cars you're barely barely ever under here if they're so reliable so I'll go ahead and start the car up now interestingly I just had an ABS light last week and uh, I but I felt my ABS like the pedal was still right where it should be, no weird pinging or any weird ABS sounds. And I parked the car, shut it off, turned it back on, never came back on. I ran my scan tool and it said that it was a code for a ABS uh, pump circuit failure. Cleared the code, ran the test like three, four more times, cycled the engine on and off, ran it. So I don't know what that was, hopefully that doesn't come back. But that's like the only uh, issue that I thought I might have and it seemed to have corrected itself. Now this car, I don't believe it has traction control because they have the uh, little switch there, but it does have ABS, which I don't even know if it's ever kicked on. Uh, I know if the Grand Marquis, it would kick on on gravel, but that might have been more so the traction control. When it's strictly ABS, it might only come on when you're like braking on gravel. And you can see I covered that up, so that, that looked pretty good. It'd be kind of nice if I, I wanted to try and integrate maybe that uh, transmitter and cut this out and put it in there, but I just figured I'll just stick it on there since the tape deck doesn't work anyway. And hopefully, I, I'll leave the air conditioner on because it's just like hot as hell out here today. Uh, the cup holders are pretty useless. So I, I, you might have saw, I actually found this real cheap, like a discount store. It's kind of tacky because it doesn't match, but you s put that in there and your drinks, they're deeper. And then what I can do a lot of times is rest my arm here and just hold on to the drinks too. So that's what I do with that. Because these are too shallow, even a water bottle just falls out. But I, I do like actually better than the newer ones that they have that little flimsy arm that comes out and it breaks and it's all spring-loaded and this whole thing pivots. 
And like right before I got rid of my Grand Marquis, that whole thing just fell apart. And we'll just lay in there. I was like, that looks nice to trade in. But so this kind probably won't ever have that failure because it's all solid. But they're, the cup holders are useless unless you just want to put like coins or uh, just whatever little knickknacks in there. Air conditioner does work. It's ice cold. Now, unfortunately, it's not R12. My 92 Stealth was R12, ice cold. Never had any issues with it, but it was a fairly low mileage car as well. But my Grand Marquis did fail, had a leak somewhere, tested good. So I'm almost wondering if it was on the valve cores. I was going to replace them, but then I was like, you know, I don't, I don't even want to have the car, no heat, air conditioning all summer. So I said, I'll just trade it in before it gets hot out. And it had some other issues too. But uh, it could have been repaired. But again, since I have this car and it's nicer, it's like, why well, have two of the same one? I prefer this one. And one other thing I'll mention is these cars always, uh, since I've had this, it always runs high on oil pressure, which I guess is better than like pegged to low and it's not pegged up to the max uh, pressure. Now these cars take five quarts of oil. I thought maybe a lot of them take six, the newer ones. I thought maybe the last owner put six quarts in it, but we put five and uh, so it was all correct and everything looked good and the oil was clean and all that, good filter on it. So I don't know why they run high. Uh, again, this was kind of the beginning of the, running the 4.6 and then you know in later years they switched to six quarts. Maybe they put a bigger pan on it or something. So maybe the engine wasn't as refined back then, but it, it runs good. Uh, everything else is again always solid. And when I first started the car up, again that um, air suspension pump runs. When I first made or made the video when I first got this car, I was curious. I was like, you know, is my pump or my bags leaking and that's why the pump's running? Well, from what I understand, it runs every time you start the car. Like I can go in or to a store five minutes, come back out. Maybe when you get out, it like levels back off. And then when you get back in, it levels back to my fat ass being in here and throwing the suspension off. I, I guess they're supposed to always run when you turn the car on more or less. Now, if I shut it off, turn it back on, it won't run. But I guess that's just standard procedure. For me, they run 10 seconds maybe. Now, if I didn't drive the car for a week, they might run for 30. Or if you, uh, what I do when I jack the car up, you're supposed to turn the air suspension off. So I'll do that. And then you know, I'd maybe just having the car off, you know, pushed up, it puts some of that the air out of it. And then it might run for 45 seconds to a minute. But beyond that though, it's just a few seconds when I first turn it on. Only issue every now and then when that pump starts, it'll get like a real loud knock sound, bang, and then it'll start working. So that's probably not good, but for this uh, age, I, I should just be happy that the air suspension still works and I'm not dragging on the ground. If it would fail, I think if you replace the bags the, uh, before the motors or the solenoids burn up, you can just do it that way. It's probably, I think the bags are cheap, but I'm not sure what the labor would be. But if I had any major issues, I'd probably just go ahead and convert it over to springs. Uh, the other issue I had was a little bit of a suspension uh, thud. Up front, it needed a, uh, I think it was a driver's side uh, sway bar end link. A little tricky on the Fords, but we got it off with an air chisel and uh, put the new one on, fixed that. There's still a little bit of a thud in the back. Uh, the sway bar end links looked good on there. Could it be the weak shocks or I don't even know that much about rear suspension. Could it just be like something in the rear end, like how it, the carrier Ford or something? I don't know, but it doesn't sound terrible, so I'll just probably live with that. And if I didn't mention it, this car did have a little bit of torque converter shutter. And I, I did a video, and it's a great product. I put two little tubes, that are small, not the big Lucas, you know, giant canister, just little tubes of a uh, torque converter shutter fix two tubes fixed it. It has not shuttered once since going uphill or on little grades or anything. Shift in and out of overdrive, no issues. So I can't believe, and I don't know how, two little tubes of that stuff actually fixed it. The fluid looked, it was proper level, really clean. So did this happen with the last owner and they changed the fluid and it didn't, they didn't help or they thought it would help? Or was the fluid just on a 47,000 mile car that clean to begin with? I don't know, but I was gonna go ahead and do fluid and filter but I put two of those tubes in and not a bit of shutter since. You gotta check that product out. If you need it for these cars, look at the reviews, I'm not lying. Like, it fixes a lot of cars. I don't know how it can do that, just a little bit. It must have a friction modifier or something. 
I don't know how it works, and it's not a, you know, if you got some major issue, it can't correct, you know, a hard mechanical problem, but somehow it must have enough viscosity or something that does fix minor issues like that shutter. I think it's called Dr. Tranny, so, I mean, I'll give props where it's due, you know, props to Rachel Levine for coming out with that. It does work. So I think I'll end the video here. Again, just kind of wanted to do an update on where it's at a year later. You know, you never know what could happen. Hopefully no accidents or, but at these days you don't know. Could you have a wildfire or a train derailment? They used to call them acts of God, but I'd call them an act of government that might take out the car. So I wanted to get another, another video on it while it still looks good. And hopefully I can get uh, some years. I got six years out of my, uh, actually seven years out of my grand marquee. So I'm in year two now of this car and really happy with it. Yeah, they're great cars and uh, it's hard to find it, you know, the ones this old and this nice of shape. So definitely like making videos on it and I'm doing my best to keep it running and looking nice. So thanks for watching and you see me in the next one. Have a good one.